Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about two things. One I've been doing for three years, something fun you could actually get your kiddos involved in doing in the garden. And two, something I just read about about two weeks ago, put it to the test, and I actually kind of like it. So hey, let's grow. The first thing we're gonna talk about are bee feeders. Now, what am I talking about by bee feeders? I'm talking about water bowls that you keep in your garden for the bees, or really anything else that needs water. And what I've used for the last three years, things has been three years, are these little ramekins like this. That right there. I've got rocks in there, that way if the bees get in, they have something to stand on and can climb out. And I have them throughout the garden. Now the biggest reason for that is, is like when last year when there was a drought here in the Houston or I guess across the country, it was a place where bees could go and get water or any other critters that are out here flying around or the lizards or really anything else. I wanted an area dedicated for them to be able to get some water. It was hot like it is right now. And I did notice that as the heat continued throughout the summer, there are more and more bees around those little ramekins that I have around the garden. And I think that's important. We gotta take care of our pollinators. We gotta take care of our critters that are out here, our beneficials that are helping us in the garden, all the pollinators. So this is something you could actually do with a youngster. Get them out in the garden, teach them about pollinators and why they're so important, and then put the watering or the filling up with water or the refreshing the water on them. Give them a little task that they get to do while you're doing all your other stuff, they can do that. Now, I will say this, when it was really, really hot, the bees would get around these ramekins and get a little aggressive. So if you start noticing that, definitely pull your kiddos back and you handle it. And the way I handled it was I would spray the hose, kind of make them disperse, and then I'd fill it up real quick and leave and let the bees do their thing. But it's a great way, again, for us to be stewards of our garden and taking care of our, our buddies, our pollinators. But hey, so, if you all have done the same thing or have any advice on this kind of a topic, please drop them in the comments. Let's discuss. The second thing I wanna talk about has to do with watering. I spend a good 40 minutes every day watering this garden. And that's even with the sections that I have drip hoses and sprinklers and all that going to everything. One reason I spend so much time is I'm inspecting everything in the garden. I'm looking for everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mainly I'm looking for progression in the plants, any kind of diseases, any plants that might need to be pulled or dealt with, and pests. Big time, that, that's what I'm doing while I'm watering. So constantly multitasking while I'm out here in the garden. But there are certain beds that I just get so tired of watering. And I saw this hack, I won't even call it a hack because this actually works. But I saw this thing on TikTok, I believe, where a woman was using one of these, which is just a, you know, a terracotta pot. These are porous, by the way and she was using the little ones inside her house for her house plants. And I was like, man, I bet that would work out in the garden. So I gave it a shot. Okay, so there it is. I buried it in the ground right here. That lid's on there for twofold. One, let's keep mosquitoes out, dirt out. And two, if I wanna sit a plant on there, I can. It's a perfect place to sit the plant. Now what I do for that bed is I lift that one up, fill it up, put the lid back on it. And what you'll notice when you do this, if you choose to do this, is over time, all the roots for the plants that are in those beds or wherever you put these terracotta pots, these you know flower pots, the roots of those plants will grow toward those pots because they will start sucking the water out of the terracotta pot through the walls. This is just another great way to get your kiddos involved. You can give them the task of filling up the water each day, filling up those pots. I mean, how easy is that? And it gets them out of the house and outside doing something in the garden. Now, you're probably asking, well, um, hello, Chad, there's a hole at the bottom of those pots. <laughs> there are. 
Let me show you how I fixed that. So the first way I tried was with some duct tape. And y'all, this worked to a point, but not very well. So I'm gonna show you the way that I did it that actually works super, super, super good. Okay, what I did to make this completely waterproof is really simple. What I do is get a piece of hard plastic. So I'm just gonna use this cup. Cut the center out right here. So we've got this right here. And then we're just gonna sit it right over the hole. First, I'm gonna use some caulking. That way it sticks and it's waterproof. I'm gonna put quite a bit in here just to ensure that when I put the piece of plastic back down on it, right here, that it sticks and it becomes completely waterproof. Just like that. Now we're just gonna let this cure for, you know, 12 hours to a day, and then we're ready to rock and roll, y'all. It's that simple. And if you wanted to, you could come back around the bottom here and fill in that edge also, just to make certain that it's very, very, very secure and waterproof, which I'm gonna do. And there you have it. Very easy to seal that up. Now, like I said, we're just gonna give it time to cure, and then we're gonna get this out there in the garden, watering our plants. Okay, now that you saw how I made these things waterproof, let me show you one that I filled up about two hours ago, right here. So this one right here. Now the water won't last forever, of course, and it will slowly leak out, both from the sides and the bottom. That's the water level from two hours ago. So it'll last pretty much throughout the day. So if you all have youngsters, or even if it's just you like it is for me, and you wanna get something in the garden to help you walk with watering and not go through all the rigmarole of hoses and sprinkler heads and all that this is a very simple cost-effective way to seriously up your watering game and it's very easy but hey if you have a youngster this is a great easy way to get them out in the garden with you doing something that they can take ownership over and it's so simple all right, everybody, that's the video. I hope you all enjoyed this. Hope you got something out of it. It is a quick video, but it's something that I believe in. It's lessening the amount of stuff that we have to do. You can involve your kids with it, and you're totally helping the pollinators with those little ramekins. As always, everyone, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, share it, like it, and subscribe to this channel if you've not done so already. If I've earned your subscription today, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you're always notified whenever I upload videos. So as you can see behind me, <laughs> the storms are coming. Y'all take care, God bless. Continue to shine bright, harvest hard. Get in the garden, get your kiddos in the garden. It's time for me to go in. I'll talk to y'all again real soon, bye. I wanna talk about has to do with watering. Now I spend a good 40, 